You're in our midst today, and there's no better time like this. Because when you are in our midst, you are here to bless us. You're here to lift us. You're here to change our stories. We give you all the glory, Father. We bless your name. Israel, we are continuing blessing His holy name, worshiping, giving glory, giving glory the great I am, giving glory the great I am who was and is and is to come. Receive all the praise and all adoration. Master, Redeemer, oh, we give you glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Thank you, the great I am. 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 Thank you, our God. Thank you, our Redeemer. Oh, we bless your name. You ready? Give you glory. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Have you joined me, please? You reign. It's okay, Matthew. You are seated. We sing Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Tell him you reign. You ain't, you ain't shed Zion's ink. Kadosh, Kadosh, you're mighty on your throne. Yesterday, this morning, you went higher than your situation. You ain't, you ain't Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your own. You are mighty. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your own.
Jesus. We're going to shout unto the Lord, Hallelujah. Please do not change the setting if it's not my changing. Please leave it how it was. If there's, uh, as we're starting off, we want to appreciate the vision we are. Proverbs in our lives. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate. Um, oh. We as the ministry, I'm telling you, oh, we appreciate God. Hallelujah. Oh, we appreciate God. Come on, appreciate the God. God, appreciate God. Appreciate God. Glory be to God. We bless God because that, that is a sure sign that no man knows his door visitation. It is just God that programs it. That is why you'd never have to compare yourself to another one. If, if they are faster, run your pace. If they are still shining, shine your shine. If they are shining brighter, make sure that you shine according to your ability. Because soon, the race is not for the swift. It is neither for uh, the most land or, but it is strictly time and just happens to every man. I'm still grateful to God. We still return all the glory to God because Sunday, indeed, all honor and glory unto our God and Lord, the, the one that is in charge of times and seasons. I am ministries. Just help me wherever you are. If you're online, just, just, just type a glory to God, you that is online, as we are blessing and appreciating God. Sunday, hallelujah. Mm. Amen. This week's theme is uh, You shall not bow down your head in shame. Oh, hallelujah. What a theme after such a wonderful and powerful visitation from God. You shall not bow down your head in shame. Hallelujah. It's all right. I'm going to, it's, it's, it's of course the theme. And I'm going to speak about something today. Um, Allow me phrase my my title. Uh, you see, I uh, I have many in the head, but allow me title and just say God is still building the final product. That's my title this day. God is still building the final product. They have not yet known what you are to become, but God is still building the final product. I've discovered that everything we go through in life, God is still building the final product. God, turn you never tell them, God is still working on you. Turn to the next one, tell them, God has not yet given up on you. Do not give up on yourself. Hallelujah. 
That is why today any anti anti prosperity forces, any anti breakthrough forces, whatever plan that the enemy has orchestrated, we are putting it under our feet in the name of Jesus, because God has not yet given up on you. That's one thing I want to tell you. I'm going to pick it from a, a very um, unusual book, but it is well. It is well. Maybe my theme scripture. Um, is in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 that is where I want to pass my theme scripture from Romans 8 and verse number 28 glory be to God amen and this is how the word is I'm reading from the NIV and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose you know many times we make plans but I've discovered that above everything else it is the purpose of God many love God but many forget to submit to his purpose God is still building the final product. God is still making sure that the purpose, let me tell you, whether you go through fire, whether you go through the worst in life, God's purpose cannot alter. God is still making sure that his purpose is being built. Hallelujah. One thing the Bible tells me in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. These plans are to prosper you and to give you a good ending. These plans are known to harm you. So that is why when the theme says you shall not bow your head down, I know that some of you, as we are speaking to you right now, you are like, but I mean, Pastor, what are you saying? You do not know what we are talking about. I was just reading, the, the schools have just um, uh, uh, put forward their terms of closing. They are closing in, within two weeks' time because of the Ebola that is going on. Uh, you know, there is all this confusion, but I'm telling you, this is what it is. God is still building the finished product. Whether it is COVID-19, whether it is Ebola, whether it is debt, whether it is sickness, God is still building your finished product. All things, that is what the Bible says, Romans 8, 28, all things, somebody say, all. When it says all, it means the good, it means the bad, it means the ugliest. All are working for one thing, the purpose of God. So it is now to you, the child of God, that you learn to have eyesight to see what the purpose of God is. That you will not waver to the east or to the west, but you shall maintain your focus. Because as long as you follow through the purpose of God, then you cannot bow down your head in shame. Shame is not a portion of someone that is hidden in the purpose of God. In the purpose of God is the protection of God. In the purpose of God is the lifting of God. In the purpose of God is the, I don't know what I want to say, but what I want to tell you is that when a man is hidden in the purpose of God, it is a sure deal. You cannot put your head down in shame. It does not mean that you will not face challenges. It does not mean that you will not face sometimes uh, situations that cause you to even question whether God's integrity is there. But the end result is this. You cannot bow down your head when the purpose of God is being pursued. God is still building the finished product. You are not yet there. At times you may be weak, at times you may be prayerless, at times you may fall, at times you may don't want, you, you, you may feel, uh, uh, but God, as long as you allow his purpose, I'm here to tell you something, God is blessing his purpose, God is protecting his purpose, God is making sure that as long as a man and woman aligns themselves to his purpose, they cannot bow their head down to shame. Shame is not your portion in the purpose of God. You see, when, when the theme when the theme one was given to us, many would love to declare it, I shall not be ashamed, I shall not be a candidate of shame. No, these things you do not just uh, you do not just decree that you are not a candidate of shame. You have to embrace the purpose of God. Somebody say the purpose. Somebody declare the purpose of God. Hallelujah. In Genesis 50, as I'm as we want to take into, into the next stage, uh, Genesis chapter number 50. 
and uh, I want to base it around here. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 50. We will not collapse. Glory be to God. Genesis 50, are you there? Glory be to God. In verse number 15, we are reading down to verse number 21. And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, he wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they added. But Joseph said unto them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Ladies and gentlemen, what began as a sell of their brother into slavery was culminated into a deliverance of a nation later on because God was behind the scenes. His purpose was for a deliverance of a nation. What these people saw was the selling of their brother. What God saw was the building of a legacy. That because Jacob, because Joseph goes to Egypt, the house of Jacob is preserved. That is why I'm here to tell you whether good, whether bad, whether ugly, one thing I want to assure those that are still waiting on God that God is still finishing up. God is still dealing with you. God is making sure sure that the final product comes out Amen. praise the name of the Lord do not be scared do not be dismayed because God is going to make sure it all adds up it all adds up to the good it is not for your destruction even the mistakes you make it is because in the end you are going to help somebody that is going down that path Joseph tells his brothers to you, you intended evil. But to God, he was busy putting together the pieces. Ah, to most of you here that cook, we know this. We know that baking flour on its own tastes bitter. Of course, we know it has some medicinal qualities. They tell us that if you want to... Uh, to whiten your teeth or something you use baking flour if you want to do uh, you know since it's alkaline in nature if you want it helps in in you trying to uh, reduce the fat in your in your belly it has it has certain characteristics but ladies and gentlemen who can endure the taste of baking flour alone baking flour on its own ah. but yet when a man gets baking flour and they mix blue band and they mix uh, uh, sugar and they mix a bit of uh, what, what, what are they what are some of those other ingredients uh, when they mix the spice when they mix some of those sweeteners uh, when they mix it around like this uh, in the end you get the cake the problem is that you are looking at situations individually anytime you're going through a situation do not look at it as you being victimized look at it as God building the picture look at it as God like a talented artist making sure that the final picture comes out best Joseph you see I'm going to share with you many things about the Bible Joseph the book of Lot is very funny. I mean the book of Job, not Lot. The book of Job has it beginning as a wealthy man. It has him ending as being double blessed. But there is that portion of his life whereby he was struggling. It may have been a few days. 
may have been a few weeks and yet remember this man was wealthy for more than 50 years before and the bible says he even grew old in age so we are speaking almost 50 or 60, 40 years later on but that brief moment of two or three weeks is what fills the book of job that some of you think that suffering ah this man suffered a lot we forget that that is not the entire story it just focused on the phase of life somebody say it is just a phase of life stop focusing on that phase of life huh? because there is a certain phase of your life huh? I, i'm speaking to people of destiny this season huh? it, it may have been a year it may be two weeks huh? it may be two months huh? it may be just a phase of your life huh? when all hell has been brought out against you huh? but i'm here to tell you that god is still building the final picture he is not yet done with you you cannot bow down your head in shame because behind the scene it is God making sure that the final picture is done you shall not bow your head in shame it's just because you get to a phase of the journey when you begin to think God has abandoned you Joseph he sold off, he sold off at 17 or 15 more so for the next 15 or 13 years he's a prisoner then after 13 years when he's 30 do you know how old joseph was when he died he died almost 100 years in fact it was 100 he saw two generations of his descendants but that one is is just mentioned in one statement he was a leader who was blessed it's just mentioned instead we they show us how he suffered which was just 13 years just a small fraction because in the end the lessons that you were supposed to be learning wherever he was going through were all targeting one thing the purpose of god i'm here to tell you shift your eyes from what you are seeing now whether it is a challenge shift your eyes ask god to give you the bigger picture always when you get to a place when your back is against the wall get into the place of your heart where you shall tell god open my eyes that i shall see it's very important otherwise it is so easy to be like a many of us because of temporary hunger temporary circumstance we have decided at the, 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 the impulse of our of our need of our lack to suddenly drop the purpose of God it is not how God works God builds the entire picture when God called into salvation he was not looking at you just confessing Christ he is looking at a deliverer of a family somewhere he is looking at a legacy that is going to be looked at generations to come no you, you may have thought that you, you you confess in Christ and sometimes when they tell you pray for your family you say ah, that is the mistake many many fathers in the land are making they think because they suffered their sons should also pay the price not knowing that God is building a picture for what they went through when the next generation is to come after them it is for them to empower this next generation that this next generation shall do better shall do greater impulse shall do and greater impact in the world this is what they are missing out you don't tell me because you suffered your spiritual son in the lord has to suffer the way you suffered no it's not supposed to be like that it is so bad when you hear fathers tell their spiritual children seek god the wise sought him no Joseph suffered because in the end the entire nation of Israel had to benefit. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, who am I speaking to this 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 morning? It is still a, oh, it is still already morning. We are already in the new day. Who am I speaking to? Praise the name of the Lord. That is what I want to tell you. God always has a timetable. And the problem is that for us, we just look at situations coming our way. God programs us. God is strategic. God always will program. You see, what happened on Sunday? Maybe 
we may have desired it maybe some years before but it was the program and timetable of God that Reverend Irene Manjari had to step here on Sunday that is the program had 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 the woman of God had prophetess had mom missed out on the purpose of God during the journey of life because I know in the journey there are opportunities that came she always tells us that look like God and yet they were not God had she overlooked this opportunity I mean had she succumbed to these opportunities wouldn't have walked into the timetable of divine visitation you see sometimes when you hear you shall not bow down your head in shame it is true it is a prophecy but I'll tell you the fact 85% is dependent on you the person they have spoken to the prophecy is just 50%, 15% but the remainder of the 85 is about you that they have spoken to that you shall not bow your head in shame hallelujah I said hallelujah glory be to God had God allowed Joseph to become the prime minister at the age of 15 or 17 he was not ready God had to first grow him to maturity anytime let me give you one prayer point I know the people of God may sometimes you may ask father release destiny helpers Lord release financial boosters Lord ABCD XYZ Lord this and this and I'll tell you this let me give you the facts who wants to know this fact who wants to know this fact who wants to know this fact praise the name of the Lord God does not give you what you have not become responsible for yet he will never give you the blessings if you he does not see in you that you are ready to handle the blessings no amount of, i'll tell you this i've discovered when you discover this soon shame shall be running from you no amount of prayer points as long as you are not yet ready i'm going to give you step i'm going to give you scriptures no amount of prayer point father lift me father change my story uh -uh. rather your prayer should be and i'm going to give you how you should pray in this season hallelujah I said hallelujah who am i speaking to glory be to god romans 9 and 19. god has not yet finished the product and because of that i'll tell you sometimes your situation is temporal but very soon you will not bow down your head in shame when he's done with the product it cannot be ashamed the, uh, I said you cannot be ashamed glory be to God Proverbs chapter I mean Romans chapter 9 in verse number 19 okay are we there verse number I said Romans 9 and verse number 19 as we are reading down then it says one of you will say to me then why does God still blame us for who resists his will but who are you O man to talk back to God can we read the next statement three and go uh-huh shall what is formed say to him who formed it why did you make me like this do you know many of you Many of you that is the clay that is working on are busy speaking back to the potter. God, I don't want this. Oh my God, let me give you the, let me give you wisdom of the Spirit of God. The clay never asks its master. I repeat it again. Clay never comments about what the master is doing. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we read down? We're in verse number uh -huh. 21, 3 and go. What does the Bible say? 3, 21. Can we read it loud? 3 and go. Uh -huh. Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lamp of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for common use? It is a question that the Bible is asking us. 
We are busy as the clay telling God. Ah, ah, my nose is so big. We are busy as the clay telling God. Why am I? Why did you? Why was I born in this kind of family? We are busy asking God. Why didn't I go to school this much? We are busy asking God. Why did I do this and this? Why did my parents fail when I was still younger? Why did my mother die when I was still at this age? Why was I born out of wedlock? Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot go beyond his purpose. I'm here to speak to you today. Because I know by nature, human beings by nature, we are always murmuring. And yet, the purpose of God, somebody said the purpose of God. Somebody said the purpose of God. Somebody speak it loudly, the purpose of God is why you will prosper the purpose of god is why you shall be lifted the as long as you pursue it so ask your neighbor are you pursuing your own purpose or are you pursuing the purpose of god hallelujah you see this is where people get it wrong this is where people get it wrong because as regards the purpose of God in the purpose of God I think it is Pastor Sarah who said it in the purpose of God there are certain places you will not have to step into in the purpose of God you may not have to belong to a cathedral <laughs> you may have to belong to a local church somewhere <laughs> you see there were men, the men of God that were with us on Sunday here one of them by the way one of them was is a lawyer And, and what was funny is that this person studied not even from Uganda. From the men and women of God that were with us, one of them studied from France. <laughs> but the purpose of God, oh, I don't know if I'm speaking to someone. I don't know if, if I, I lift up those hands this, this morning, lift up those hands, tell Heavenly Father, above everything else, help me love your purpose. Help me live your purpose. Help me understand your purpose. One of the things about, especially the book of Ruth, is that when you read according to the blessing of the Bible, you begin Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Hmm? Are you hearing me? Judges. Then Ruth gets there. After Ruth, you begin first Samuel, second Samuel, first Kings, second Kings. Am I speaking to somebody? Chronicles, first and second chronicles. What is Ruth doing in the midst of first and foremost the law? Joshua, which were the leadership. And then the kings of Israel. What is Ruth doing there that is a Moabitess? A what is Ruth? What is the book of Ruth doing there? Had you ever thought about it? Of all the names that are there, you find Ruth sticking out. Have you had? Have you had the lineup? Have you had the lineup? It is the law. It is first and foremost the books of the law. Then we have the leadership of Israel then we have the judges of Israel then you have Ruth standing there then it's like as though the Bible breaks in between and then afterwards you have the kingship of Israel flowing what is Ruth doing there today I'm going to speak to you about the purpose of God and it's until when we get to read about the life of Ruth that we understand what the purpose of God is I repeat it again. Any man, as long as you are pursuing the will of God, you will not bow your head in shame. Oh, I said, you shall not bow your head in shame. Amen. This is one assurance I know. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. So, something special about truth all throughout there what is it about truth and as we go and try to look at the life of Ruth because of course as the story has it 
she is a Moabitess. And Moab, all of us know, Moab is a result of incest. Moab is one of the sons of Lot and his daughter. Am I making sense? So what is an outcast doing in the chronology of the books in the Bible that show a, a certain pattern? That it is broken when the term Ruth appears. What is it about Ruth? Today let me speak to you as we're going to read out and as we're going to pray. That may every divine purpose of God that he has programmed and purposed for you. May that purpose in the name of Jesus be the reason why you are still going to stand. Let's stand up on your feet as we welcome my mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Mom, you're very welcome. Uh, you can clap those hands for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Uh, we give glory to God, the vision bearer right now. My mother is right now in the house. She's now right now with us in this week of uh, God removing the shame upon your life. Glory be to God. Please take your seat. Take your seat. In the name of Jesus. So, We are here to, to speaking to us that at the place where God is going to give you a testimony and before the happenings of it all, there are phases in life that are entirely determined by you that is in the story. In this story, ladies and gentlemen, mm, hallelujah, we see Ruth chapter 1. I'm going to keep giving us uh, many examples here. We, th we see Ruth chapter 1. Glory be to God. Amen. Please open your Bibles in Ruth chapter number 1. And this is what we see in the story of Ruth. Ruth gives us the lesson because she starts from the place of disadvantage. Along the way, something happens that somehow, somewhere, oh, hallelujah, somewhere, somehow, a story that was hopeless suddenly becomes one of the most powerful stories in the history of our Lord Jesus Christ. That a Moabitess is mentioned as the one of the descendants of our Lord Jesus Christ. She begins off as a widow. But the story has it that she ends up as being an ancestor of our Lord Jesus Christ. The story from the place of despair to the place whereby God makes sure that your name has been written down in the books of history of life. What is it about her? This week we are saying you shall not bow down your head in shame. But more so I'm here to tell you behind the scene God was busy putting places together. God was busy placing things together. And to what Ruth was going through unknown to what Naomi was going through God was busy putting pieces together tell your neighbor trust the process many at times we want to skip ship when it is hot and yet at times it is the heat that makes you ready food is never ready until when there is heat am I speaking to someone when you want to get good food you have to apply heat yet many times when the process comes and there is heat for you you want to run out amen I'm speak, I'm, my topic today I'm speaking about God working to perfect the product God is going to perfect you God is in the process of perfecting his plan and purpose for your life. You have never failed. Your delay is not because you failed. Your delay is because the process is taking its time. 
Tell your neighbor again, learn to trust the process. Oh, hallelujah. Learn to trust his process. Amen. Glory be to God. When the book of Ruth, if you're there, say, I am there. Glory be to God. The Bible says in the book of Ruth, I'll be reading somewhere and I'll be skipping somewhere, but I'm going to try and get this together uh, by the grace of God. The Bible says, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Melon and Kilion, and the Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Ophir and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Marlon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Now already there, there is a someone here. Hallelujah. But what are we speaking about? A family goes to Moab because of the situation in, in, Jude, in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Oh, you did not hear me allowed certain things to happen in your life that will position you somewhere you see in the story of Ruth we have players we have Naomi we have the husband Elimelech we have the son Kilion we have the son Marlon because the program was the process to connect Ruth to the lineage of our Lord Jesus So because of the famine, these people wind up heading to Moab. And in Moab, that is when one of the sons of Naomi gets a wife from Moab. And one of them, of course, marries Opa. Another one marries Ruth. But that is not where it ends. Suddenly, it turns to a dark side. How many of you know that they will stand with you when it is good? But usually in the dark times, very few stand with you. You see, for God, for the Bible, for the theme of this, you say, your shame shall be wiped away. There has to be something. I say it, it is a prophetic word. But I'm telling you, 85% is dependent upon you that is being spoken upon. The story in the hand has Ruth as a grand parent to Jesus. But somewhere, somehow, there was a place where she had to decide. In the journey, there was a place where she got to and had to decide, should I leave Moab that is my comfort zone and follow Naomi back to, Jer to Bethlehem? Or should I, like Opa, leave this woman? She's complaining a lot. Let her go back. She's bitter. Let me stay with my people. She had to decide. This is where many miss it out. On one side is the fulfillment of the prophecy. But you have to decide. You have to make sure that the Spirit of God has to show you the purpose of God concerning your life. If you miss out on that, ladies and gentlemen, I do not care. Moab may be looking fertile at that moment. Moab may be looking all the best at that moment. But very soon it is going to turn. Am I speaking to someone? Am I speaking to someone? You see, to get to the place where shame is not your portion, you have to have traveled a journey. You have to have allowed the process of God to groom you, to make you, to make you ready. If you hear me say, I hear you. And this is where it gets interesting. As we're reading down, 
I'm in verse number 11. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who would become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then give birth to sons, would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this they wept and Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. I'm here to ask you, what are you ready to cling to? At that moment, Naomi looked like she had nothing. You see, this is where the provision for the prophecy is now playing out. You see, we as Christians, we are good at saying, I receive, I shall not be a candidate of shame. But I'll tell you, it goes beyond you saying, I receive. Ruth somehow perceived that even if Naomi right now, it looks like your, your situation looks like bitterness but I perceive that it goes beyond you being bitter but until when I'm in Bethlehem the place of the house of bread until when I have arrived there there is no fulfillment of prophecy I want to speak to someone this morning I want to speak to someone let the spirit of the Lord give you vision I said let the spirit of the Lord grant you insight Ruth had to look beyond the bitterness of Naomi. She had to see the blessing in Bethlehem. Just as Elisha looked beyond the bitterness of Elijah. And he had to see the double portion that was waiting. That was in the spiritual him waiting for him to receive. By the time you are not a candidate of prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, heaven should have endorsed you. Sometimes for heaven to endorse you, there will be seasons where you have to be patient and you don't understand what is going on. But you have to be patient and proceed with the plan until when you, oh my goodness. There are moments whereby you may not understand what is going on. But as long as Ruth, Naomi is saying, I'm going back to Bethlehem. You have to say your people shall be my people. Uh, that is what they call commitment. That is what they call com convenience. Do you know that as children of light, we are so much lacking in place in terms of commitment. We are so much lacking in terms of what they call covenant. Ruth telling Naomi, your people shall be my people, is what they call covenant. In other words, she was telling Naomi, I know when I look at you, there's nothing you can give me. But I am covenanting myself to your God. Because I know that when I set myself in the place of the, uh, the house of bread, Bethlehem, I know that the prophecy upon my life is going to be fulfilled. How many of you know that following the covenant is not easy? When you get to the place of being committed, know that you are now getting yourself into the place of covenant. You know, most people think church is where you can come easily and live easily. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you this. Elijah had many servants before Elisha. But it is Elisha that understood that from the head of this man, there is a double man. The Elisha, the Eli let me tell you something. It was the place called prophecy that showed Elisha there is a double mantle upon Elijah that I have to receive. Tell your neighbor, make sure touch your neighbor, shake them and tell them, make sure that you wait on God until he fulfills the process. That is why I say the topic of us today is saying God is still making sure the picture is perfected. It is, may look like you may not understand it right now, but in the end, the picture is going to be perfected. Shame will not be your portion. People will see and know that that has been the hand of God at work. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't just say that it's been the hand of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it is because the picture has been made perfect. Sunday was like any other day. For those that have been in this place for a while that know the story of this place. 
for those that have cried the tears of this place for those that have waited patiently in the midst of mockery it was a time whereby it looked like it was an ordinary Sunday but ladies and gentlemen Sunday there was a picture that was painted again upon I am Ooh, something happened hallelujah something happened that even if somebody was commenting negatively we had a chance to converse with some of the people and they were telling us what was going on and sister was telling us what was going on here on Sunday and it was it was mind blowing you know when you hear the account of what was going on people got to that point whereby when you know you know it was like when they were coming out of their service that is when Reverend Irene Manjeri got into the, the place some of them I'm told had to first get out of their vehicles some had to get their phone cameras to record what was going on don't, 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 don't tell me that is ordinary what after some few months back some people standing and saying those people pray a lot they, they, they're over praying when do they work they, i don't know if you understand the, the, that casting oh my goodness may, may a certain ruth that is in this place whether you are about to turn and go and follow up back to moab may you be a uh, may you have a focus because ladies and gentlemen for shame to be removed away ruth has to be prepared to be committed some of them did not know prophet Simon and Alex, but that day they show her and they said hey that is the woman of god of that place. said hallelujah it is about i'm telling you as as i speak to you ladies and gentlemen let that make you perceive and let you do and, and let it make you understand that it is a season where shame and reproach are being rolled away as mom usually says not 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 as mom usually says to those that have been faithful your reward is coming to you speedily hallelujah praise the name of the lord you see in the church we have two kinds of people we have the ruth kind of people and we have the upper kind of people Opa will be there when it is convenient i am is my church prophetess this is my church i love our ministries when the situation looks like there is nothing going on Opa always runs back to our people and the second category is ruth who will say in every situation, I am committed by covenant. That you see, when let me hear this statement, Mama has always told you to told us this statement. The Bible says, Hear what to be covenanted means. Verse 16. But truth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you will go and where you will stay, I will stay your people will be my people and your God my God where you die I will die and there I will be buried may the Lord deal with me be it ever so severely if anything but death separates you and me and when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her she stopped nagging her Why are, you no longer, why are you no longer gathering at I am? Ah. Those people. Ah. The choir director does not know, looks at me with a bad eye. Mama usually tells the husband when she explains, ah, the ushers did not get me. <laughs> Opa, you are still far away from God's promise. I said, Opa, you are still far away from God's promise. The promise of God removing shame needs a Ruth mentality it needs a Ruth who says I left the world and I'm here and I'm not standing back and usually your commitment is going to be seen when the going is tough when it is good everyone can promise heaven and earth 
But when the going gets tough, that is when even God is busy examining those that are ready for the next stage of his purpose. All things work <laughs> together for the good of those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. This purpose, ladies and gentlemen, will give you a marking skin. And when you fail that stage of the purpose of God, you have to do your retake. It's all about the purpose of God, ladies and gentlemen. You want me to say that again? It is, it, is, it is not about your talent. It is not about who you know or how much you speak well or how. It is all about the purpose of God. When you decide to focus on his purpose, that is what will open doors for you. You see, the purpose of God is the wisdom of the Spirit of God at work in your life. Because when you are pursuing the wisdom of the Spirit of God, his hand will tell you, wait. It is not your time. His hand will tell you, now you've come of age. Move. His hand will tell you, this is not the place to be. Leave. Hello? Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Otherwise, when we miss out, I speak it again. When we miss out on the purpose of God, we have missed out on everything as regarding life. Many want to make shortcuts, but ladies and gentlemen, in the end, the shortcut will cost you. If I'm speaking to somebody, say, I am the one. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. The purpose of God. The purpose of God. Please open your Bibles in Ruth again. Ruth chapter number 4. Ruth chapter number 4. This is after, of course, Ruth settles down with Boaz. And this is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in uh, Ruth chapter number 4. And uh, we are now down to verse number 9. Then Boaz announced to the elders and to all the people. Today you are witnesses that I have brought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech. Kilion and Malon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabites. Melon's widow as my wife in order to maintain the name of the dead and his property. You, you, you know what is so funny? Because Opa jumped out. <laughs> we do not hear Kilion here again who has the letters but we hear Malon because Ruth clung to the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Bible says so that his name will not disappear from among his family all from the town records. Today you are witnesses. 11. And then the elders and all those at the gate said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. Watch. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> it is so interesting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ruth is compared in the Bible to Rachel. One of the things about Rachel and Leah, these were the wives of Jacob, who gave birth to the 12 tribes of Israel. Are you seeing what it means to pursue the purpose of God? Because the purpose of God, ladies and gentlemen, is beyond you. It is beyond your abilities. God is always out there to build something. Oh, may you not miss out on your legacy. I said, may you not miss out on your legacy. Because the purpose of God strictly and strictly is to make sure that the godly legacy remains. They speak truth and say, may God bless you and may you be a builder. Hmm. May you be a builder like Rachel 
and Leah who together built up the house of Israel. May you have a standing in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tama bore to Judah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, you may not know what is what you're carrying, but as long as you are ready to wait until the end, there is something that people will look at as a reference. Uh, because our grandmother sought God, we are here as a generation of uh, we are here as a generation of God-fearing doctors. Uh, we are here as a generation. We, our children, we want to bless God for our mother who prayed and sought God for us. Ladies, you are not here by mistake. You do not, let me tell you, never make it, never make it, never think that you are here in, by mistake. Don't think of it that way. Because in the end, God is still perfecting the finished product. God is still perfecting the finished product. See how Ruth becomes a great ancestor. And how does it happen? 13 here. And so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And then he went to her, and she and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. And the women say to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time Shem leaves, it is after you have birthed out something. You're waiting on God soon is having a result. Oh, lift up and say, oh, make the grace of God upon your life. May God grant you grace that you shall not miscarriage. You will not miscarriage what you're carrying. May you bath it out in the name of Jesus. May ah, you do not know what I'm saying. But the world is waiting to hear that there is a, there is what they call a, a gospel arcade that has been built by one of the sons of prophets here, and that is when they'll say, "Oh, indeed, let your God be our God." They're waiting to hear what they call a gospel land property masters, and because of that, they will know. Oh, you you are about to bath out something. Thing. Ladies and gentlemen, for shame to leave, it is not just for you to say, I receive. It is until you get to the place of bathing. Ruth begins, I've shown you of all how the books in the Bible are placed. When you look at the chronology of these books, you somehow say, like, as though Ruth is misplaced. But yet, Ruth gives us the perfect example of a woman or of a Christian who understood the purpose of God and pursued it until the end. I say it again, you shall not be a candidate of shame. I said you will not be a candidate of shame. The very God that lifted Joseph, the very God that changed the story of Ruth, is the very God that is still waiting on you now. Oh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not changing. He is still the same God of principle. What you have to do is make sure you bath it out. I said, make sure you bath it out. Make sure you bath it out. Because at the time you bath out, oh hallelujah, when Elisha understood this, he got a bath out a double portion. He operated in realms that even Elijah had not yet stepped into. When David understood it, he stepped into the realm of kingship that not even his family members had yet had. Why? Because when a man prevails till the end shame cannot locate them oh I say despair cannot locate them you see yes mom usually says the journey looks a bit tough the journey has questions the journey has at times when you want to give up but who is ready to say I am committed 
getting out of this until when I see it. Please read for me 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5. First Corinthians, please get there. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. First Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 4. Please read it out loud. Are we all there? Four and verse five, three and go. What does the Bible say? First Corinthians four and verse five, three and go. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. Judge not. Let me tell you, the problem is this. Most of you, when you see people going through tough times, you sometimes, even you that is here, I know some of you, when you go through tough times, oh God, what is going on? No, I'll tell you this, I've told you before. There are times when the heat has to come to prepare you. Judge nothing before the appointed time. I see men and women that are about to get into the appointed time. See, you are not saying amen because you are used to the fire. But let me tell you, even the fire is pushing you to appointed time. Judge nothing before the appointed time. Oh, let me speak to Ruth that is here. Judge nothing before the appointed time. Because Naomi looks like as though she does not have any future right now. But Naomi is going to be your connection to Boaz. Uh, now, oh my God. Naomi is going to connect you to what you have never thought of. Bible says what eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard. That is what God is going to project and protect upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Judge not anything before the appointed time. Woo. That church, ah, those people, let me tell you, that is Oprah. And the problem is here, we are having Ruthies that are now listening to Oprah. Your ministry, they are so, they are so judgment. Please, when Oprah does not understand the process. And the problem is that you are busy entertaining Oprah. Oprah will kill you. Anyone from this point on that will try and speak to you, open for them the scripture. Judge not anything before it's appointed time. In other words, he's telling you, wait for me for a while. The next phase of life you're going to see me. I may have come as a refugee for Moab, but the next phase of life you're going to see me, I'm going to be an ancestor of the king of glory in the life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm bathing out something. I'm bathing out something. I'm bathing out something. Until when Sarah bathed out Isaac, she was always walking in shame. But when the appointed time appeared, shame had to leave her. I want you to pray this prayer this morning. Because until when you are ready to tell God, strengthen me. Strengthen my feeble knees. Hold me with your right hand. May I not stagger. May I be steadfast. Oh, my goodness. Who am I speaking to? Who am I speaking to? Who am I speaking to this day? My God, my God, my God. We are about to pray. We are going to go into the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my God. Thank you because you are doing a new work within us. Thank you, Father. We're going to pray in this line. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter number 15.
Please get Romans number 15. As we're going to lift up a prayer to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number 15. In verse number 5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. Romans 15 in verse number 5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity amongst yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. Many of you, the place of endurance you are found wanting. This morning as you're going to lift up your hand in prayer, tell him, Lord, give me endurance to make it to the finish line. Because the blessings are waiting at the finish line. When you drop off along the journey, no matter how skillful you've been running, you are not going to get anything. Stand up on your feet. Let that be your prayer. Oh God, strengthen my hands. Oh God, strengthen my knees. Oh God, strengthen my resolve. Strengthen my commitment. Father, strengthen me. I, I will not stagger. I will not waver. I will stand steadfast. I will be like Ruth. I will be like Joseph. That we are committed. Oh, I want to hear somebody lift up their voice this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, before the Lord this morning. See, the Bible, the book of Ruth says that there were two types of people there was Opa. It was true she was both also a Moabite and there was Ruth. But the difference between both of them was that Ruth understood the purpose of God. This morning in the name of Jesus Father we come before you this morning because we know oh God all things work together for the good of those that love you and those that are called unto your purpose. This morning in the mighty name of Jesus as we come before your God. Father we are in the season where you've told us that we shall not bow down on our heads hands in shame. We come before your God because some of us are the Ruthies. Some of us, oh God, we are the Josephs, oh God. We are in a time, my God, where we are waiting on you, my God. We are in the season, oh God, where the potter is working in us, where the potter is making the clay. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come this morning, oh God, for the Bible said that may the God who gives endurance, may the God who gives endurance, tell him, Heavenly Father, give me endurance. Endurance to wait on you. Endurance to focus on purpose. Endurance to focus on what you're doing. Endurance to know your will. Endurance to walk in your will. Endurance not to be diverted. Ask him this prayer this morning because as long as you are walking the journey of faith, as long as you are walking the journey unto which God has called unto you, you will have voices of discouragement. You will have voices that will question your commitment. You will have voices that will ask you, is it true that God called you there? Is it true that that is the church that the Lord has called you unto? Is it true? They will have questions. You will have offers that will always discourage you along the way. You shall have them. You shall have lots that will ask you, that will be burdens unto you in this journey of faith. But in the name of Jesus, the God who gives endurance, may God who gives endurance strengthen every feeble knees, strengthen every feeble hands in the mighty name of Jesus. The God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the spirit of unity because when all of you are like-minded when you are united that is when you shall win many a times that is where division start from because some they do not have the spirit of endurance when they are not enduring they'll begin to question they'll begin to doubt and they'll begin to poison they'll begin to contaminate those that are genuinely following they are Naomi's those that are genuinely following they are Elijah's this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, uh, we are not candidates. Uh, we are not candidates to drop off. Uh, Father, you've promised us uh, that we are not going to bow down our head in shame. Uh, because as long as we cross the finish line, uh, as long as we cross the finish line, uh, as long as we cross the finish line, uh, there are blessings forevermore. Uh, as long as we cross the finish line, uh, there are blessings, uh, there are liftings, uh, there are deliverances, uh, there are breakthroughs. Uh, as long as we cross the finish line, uh, go before the Lord this morning. 
morning. Lift up your voice this morning. Tell him this morning. As long as, oh, as long as, because in this journey, the Satan, there will always be angels of discouragement. There will always be demons that will whisper discouragement. There will always be voices that will whisper retrogression. But in this season, the God that has given endurance, God that gave endurance to Joseph, God that gave endurance to Moses, God that gave endurance to David, is the same God that is yesterday, today, and forevermore, that is granting you endurance, that you shall not faint. You will cross the finish line. You will cross the finish line. You will cross the finish line. You will cross the finish line to the place of the reward, to the place of the bathing out. Tell him this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, as a carrier of the generation, as a generation carrier, as a carrier of the legacy, because when Ruth persevered to the end, when Ruth persevered to the end, she bathed out a nation, she bathed out a legacy, she bathed out a generation. Ladies and gentlemen, miracles are not necessarily because you pray a lot. Legacies are not necessarily because you fast a lot, but because the God of endurance, the God of endurance has granted you endurance. Let him lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Vananga yenda masunga mukama. Vananga sama. Vananga sama. Vananga sama. The Bible says that he that began a good work in you shall accomplish it in Christ Jesus. Ah, he that began a good work in you, in the name of Jesus, is accomplishing it. He's accomplishing it. He's making it successful. You will not fail. You will not falter. You will not fail. You will not falter. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty 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 Never in our ever took her, never you come in famo, Kumanga Zinembido, Mukananga Sizako Dukamango, Zinembido, Zakumena Duka, Nakweto Rabiano, Rako Gomi Kiriza, Vanayore Nakuranero, Mugambe Tiesu, on Pechisa, Echi Senti Maraco, on Pechisa, Echi Panguza, on Pechisa, Echi Somosa, Rinya Yesu Christo, O Manava Catondo Bravo, on Pechisa, Echi Yamba. On Pamani, on Pamani, La Ibrahimo, Rata Sanga Sagana, which is so visoto, Rinya Yesu Christo, O Manava Catondo Bramo, Avai, Ruvanga Murugendorino, Mumisin Medino, Murimova Luti, Murimova Opa, Murimova Absolomo, Murimova Angino, Murimova Isopero, Murimova Kaini, Avata Tegera Rugendo, Gamba Catona, Homoron de Guno, On Yambanga Mokama. On Yamanga Mokama, Kumango Sumiza, Tishigenda Puena Moji Swalo, the Sidio Mokabo, Abagendo Swaziba, Sidio Mokabo, Abagendo Kaba, Sidio Mokabo, Abagendo Kugamba, Tikatunda Tukueza, Nayoro Kumanga, Tetua Maririza, Rabatua Maremia Kaja Fejuna, Ah, the Mokama, Tugenda Kueza, Tugenda Kunonya, Tugenda Kusomoka, Pakangatumaze, Okusoma. Pagama to Maze, Ogotoke Comedo, Awa Kanyiba, eh Mugambi To Sidika to Sidika. Do not keep quiet. This is a prayer that is going to push you to the finish line. May you not faint along the way. May God give you the grace that you shall not faint along the way. May God give you the grace that you shall stay focused along the way. Naba said Yaba Naba Gengi, Abari Kuankachia Samaria, Enaba Gamantia Ah, where to Sigara Machi Fortuno, to Genaku Fenjara, Nayaka to Sone, Legatu Yode, Legatu Gende Maso, Hugamebo Kama, Omo Yuamo Kama, Omo. Benzi Wangi, Anti Mani, Amanga Ganizi, Namazoko Somoka, Ah, Ejisora Chugeno Kunyambra, Chinese Rimokama, Emitale Rimokama, Namazemokama, Okulemera Ko, Ah Katondo Ejisa, Timoche Mani, Echigendo Zariba Munda Munzi, Chigena Kudame was a Vinjino, Chigena Kubera Machano Kurevito Vinjino, Katimokambe Echino Chanedo, Mukabi Echino Chanedo, Mukabi Echino Chanedo, 
in other words, to not to look over, not to talk come or come, would you fall a tikida, to not to look to talk, would you fall, Katonda Wayoza Yoza, Abamazoku Wangada, Abamazoku Somoka, Atomoron Niguno, Mogambe Mokama, Eti Sent in Yamba, Eti Sent in Panguza, Eti Sent in Pisabo, Eti Sent in Yamba, Rodinia Yesu Christo, Omana Katonda Mramo, Nano Moyoga Opa, Nano Moyoga Solomo, Nano Mokama, <laughs> Chicanca, <laughs> Pena como eu vou apagar o Gana, pena como eu vou apagar o Sanzamo, se tu ganhar meu java eri, meu java tava nem vai eri, ava tanto que na chevali vai ter do cora, por isso nem Jesus Cristo mandou que tu não me lamos sabe. Nesse santo lá de nebosa, libra na mamá mamá zete nele de, malaba cosi pana la baba baba, requete de bo santo lá baba baba. Ma Shantori Ma Zanta Ya Baba Ma Shantori Ma Zanta Ya La Baba Ma Shantori Ma Zente De De Bo Ma Shantori Ma Zanta Ya La Baba E Mugambe Chino Chani Da Muri Nyala Yesu Christo Mugambe Chino Chani Da Muri Nyala Yesu Christo Mugambe Mugambe Chino Chani Do Sing As We Kona Plani Zange Mukama Na Ye Chigende La Chow Makato Na Mo Bora Mo Wange Mukama Esi Na Turi Taking Aku Chigende La Chow Turi Taking Aku Kwanga Na Ko Kubanga Wari O Kwanga Na Ko Wari chigende na cho, awari okwanga na ko, mukama wagendo tulunga misa, awari okwanga na ko, mukama tugendo kuwanga lida, awari okwanga na ko mukama, eji sada we chigendo genda, awari okwanga na ko mukama. Yes, yes, I don't hear you pray. I don't hear you pray. Mugambe mukama mumuli insonga yona. Let this be your prayer point. The second prayer point, Gamba. Oh God, reveal your purpose to me in every circumstance in life. Mugambe mukama numbi kuriro kuanga na ko. Leka mbelenga ntege na mukama. Leka mbelenga simana gashana wabu sanzi mukama. Oku sinzina nga buenda ba. Neye mukama leku kuanga na kongu tengele. Reveal your purpose at the right time and to me. Reveal your purpose at the right time and to us. Reveal your purpose so God and to us so God. As the people that are following. As the many Ministers in this place, as the congregation in this place, reveal your purpose unto us, O God. Because when Ruth understood the purpose, when Ruth pursued the purpose, she ended up being an ancestor, a grandmother of the father of Obed, who was the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. When she understood her purpose, Nakuranero, we 
chifoma elisha chema tegeda elande mafuno mwina gino kwa mirundi emidi chifelisa chema tegeda na mkwamelela eli ya mukama na liyo kafuno mugabo kwa mafuta kwa mirundi emidi mkanda wange shama mkanda wange shama kuno kwe murembe katonda kwa teka teka kuteka kwa mafuta chile chwe nkwa meneno aliyo kasi tuleka nisha mchitibwa wangeno jikwa kulina kuno kwe murembe kwa ino kulaba revival kuno kwe murembe kwa ino kona te kusukuno mabachi tafe mkatona chema koze huli nyane ya yesu kristo wana katona mna musaba saba tell him this morning tell him this morning tell him this morning tell him this morning kumsai kwa yesu kukukwe kumsai kwa yesu kukubike oh oh shakalataya mala baba hey ene sale singo kusaba ene sale singa face e singa sente zo musaba kubange sente zija kujango teke de chicken dela choba katonda eche ene sale ene singa no bufumbo wa bado musaba ene sale ene singa no kwenye zewa kwa bado no nya abaye ene sale no yesinga this prayer is what you need when you understand the purpose of God when you pursue the will of God in the end you shall remove every shame from your life you will not bow down your head in shame you will not bow Bow down your head in shame because you've understood the will of God. You've understood and walked in the purpose of God. Let that be your prayer in this season. Let that be your prayer as you pursue God in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. I tell him, Father, I refuse to fall off. I refuse to backslide. I refuse, oh God, to entertain the thoughts of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Masha Kataya. Li breke tele ba 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 riba santa na ba ba kampuli ba batima yonga ba kora yesu kampuli ba batima ya ba kora mukama let me hear batima sa zukrayant unto Jesus let me hear batima sa let me hear batima sa kampuli ba ita yesu kampuli ba kana ba ita yesu kampuli ba down ya ba ita mukama kampuli ba musa ba ita mukama kampuli ba yosha ba ita mukama kamba uli ne chino chani donga mama ita uli nyana yesu Kristo mana katondo mna mu abaya wadi Kompi wia tenge se, ya tenge so kulina, ya tenge so kwa nukuna, ya tenge so kudamu. Kampu ni dea masanja, na makazinga bako na mokama. Muli nyane Yesu Christo mana katonda mlamu. Muli nyane ya mokama ofe. Oh Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wanike mikono jo. In Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in Lamentation 3, 21, 23. The masses of the Lord are new every morning. As you are waiting on God, may mercy be your portion in this season. That even when you are about to fall, by his mercy may he uphold you by his right hand. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says Isaiah 40 and verses 31, God will renew your strength. I say strength as you pursue the purpose of God. Strength as you seek the will and purpose of God. It shall be your portion in the land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus, strength for prayer. Strength to seek the mind of God. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says in Psalms 9 and verses 9, God is your stronghold. Katonda chechi gocho modukida. Let the Lord preserve you. Let the Lord cover you. Let the Lord preserve you in his wings. Let the Lord preserve you in his wings. Let the Lord preserve you in his wings. May God be your refuge. As he says in Nahum 1 and 7, may God be your refuge against any wind of discouragement. May you be able to endure until the end as a good soldier in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. Leka chiverenga chogendo tamuli na mamuli nyari ya Yesu Christo. Omana wanka tondo mulamu. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in John 15 and 16. God chose you to bear fruit. You shall bear fruit of patience. You shall bear fruit of endurance. You shall bear the fruit of people, men and women of God that are waiting on God patiently. You shall bear the fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. First Peter 5 10. God will make you stand strong. God will make you stand strong and firm in the name of Jesus that you shall make it to the finish line in the mighty name of Jesus. I said Romans 8 37 you are more than a conqueror. You conquer anything that the enemy rises against you. In the name of Jesus we declare that no weapon fashion 
prevail against us from the pit of darkness uh, shall prevail against us in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, no arrow from the pit of hell uh, will divert us from that purpose. Uh, no shame will see us. Uh, no out of shame will see us. Uh, no out of shame will see our parents. Uh, no out of shame will see our children. Uh, no out of shame will see the spiritual children of this place. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, nothing because we are more than conquerors. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 1 and 37, uh, there is nothing impossible with God. Uh, the God of all impossibilities. Uh, the God who makes you sure that what he told you shall come to pass. Uh, let uh, yeah, 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 yeah. With God everything is possible. With God everything is possible. We declare it this morning. Uh, with God everything is possible. Everything is possible concerning your walk. Uh, concerning your waiting on God. Uh, concerning the promises of God upon your life. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says Exodus 17 and 15. Uh, that God is your banner. In the name of Jesus. Uh, may the banner of the Lord advertise you as God is your banner. May his banner speak out louder than any other banner that will be spoken against your life. Than any other handwriting that will be spoken against your life. God is your banner. As is your banner, may he be the one that shall be advertising you everywhere you go as you wait on his purpose in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I conclude by Psalms 55 and verse 22. God will not let the righteous fall. I said the righteous shall not fail. The chosen of the Lord shall not fall. I said they shall not fail. You shall not fall. You shall not fail. You shall wait on God until the season of answered prayer. Until when you shall bath out. You shall not faint. You shall not fall. You shall not backtrack. You shall not go to the path that he has not assigned you. In the name of Jesus. We declare these words uh, as we seal them under the covenant uh, of the blood of Jesus. Uh, and we declare that it shall be yes uh, and it shall be amen. Uh, and it shall not be otherwise. Uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son uh, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name we've declared. Yes. Kovina, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as the word has gone out, the Bible says, Isaiah 55, 11, that his word shall not return to him null and void. As his word has gone out, it shall not return to him null and void. But it shall accomplish the purpose to which it has been sent to. We speak these words in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. As you lift up your hands, in the name of Jesus, thank you, the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, excellent God. Father, as your sons and daughters have lifted up their hands this evening, this morning, be it unto them according to your word. The God that gives us endurance and encouragement. Because Lord, these are spiritual Ruthies. These are spiritual Josephs who are on a journey. And on this journey, you are yet to make them bath out. They will not fail. They will not be diverted. But in accordance with the plan and purpose of heaven, they will accomplish that which you call them to. We give you all the glory. We bless your name. For we have declared it under the grace and anointing of this place. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen and amen. As we speak, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. And the words of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever in Jesus' mighty name and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord with my wife and children and great-grandchildren forever and ever 
in Jesus' mighty name. Clap for Jesus. God bless you. Yes. Don't forget we're having a morning glory in the morning. And uh, we're going to have again a lunch hour and the evening session again tomorrow in this series. Ah, connect to this anointing. You will not bow down your head in shame. In Jesus' mighty name. Greetings from my mother, Prophet Simona Agnes. She sends out her love to you and she declares the blessing of God as we are about to close this year in the name of Jesus. So, shalom and shalom. God bless you until when we meet today in the morning in Jesus' mighty name. God bless. Thank you.